Hello and welcome. We are back with the next chapter that is called the government involvement in real estate financing. Now, we've talked in a previous chapter about the introduction into financing, and we touched on some of the most common loans that you will see. Today, we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about financing and more about some of what we call are known as the governmental loans. So let's dive in and get started. So let's get started and, and dive right in. And we're going to talk about today the Federal Reserve System and how the Federal Reserve System, which is run by the Board of Governors, is there to help create and maintain sound credit of the United States. They are the ones that raise and lower rates that you probably see on TV when people said, well, you know, the Fed's going to talk today. They are the ones that are trying to counteract or balance that teeter-totter that we've talked about before with supply and demand and, and the economic outlook. Now, the country is divided into 12 federal reserve districts, all right? Um, so doesn't really matter, but Reserve District Number 1 is out of New York, and they're usually the chairman of the Fed board. Now, the big thing, the most important factor in the Federal Reserve System is that they control the flow of money in only two ways. There's only two ways in which they influence money. The first one is they establish what is called the reserve requirement. The reserve requirement is the amount of money that the bank must keep in its vault in reserve for every dollar it loans out. And they keep this money in case there's a, an issue with that loan. It goes bad and somebody needs to cover it or it gets foreclosed upon. So currently the reserve requirement is 10%. So in other words, if the bank loans $100,000, they must have $10,000 in reserve to back or protect that loan. Now, another way of looking at this, let's flip those numbers. The bank can loan out 10 times the amount of money they've got in their bank, okay? Because then they would have 10% reserve. So now you understand why in the last 10, 15 years, you see a lot more banks advertising on TV trying to get the consumer to use their bank because they understand that if you bring your weekly paycheck into them and say, here's $2,000 I want to put in my bank account because it was my paycheck, they now can loan out $20,000 and still meet that reserve requirement. So it has become a very popular ploy for these banks to be more consumer guided for this one reason alone. Now, the second way the Fed re, uh, controls money is this thing called the discount rate. They set the discount rate. And the discount rate is the rate at which the Fed loans money to other banks. All right. So I told you and I dispelled your myth earlier that banks don't have money. Jed Clampett has money. Their investors have money. BlackRock has money. So there are times when that bank may think hey, I need to borrow some money from somebody so I can make some loans. They can actually go to one of those 12 Federal Reserve Districts and borrow money. Now, it's not like they choose one of those districts. They go to the one they're in, all right? So, like, if you're in Florida, you go to number, uh, I believe it's two. I, I don't quote me on that. But you can't say, well, uh, I'll go out to number eight. No, you have to go to your Federal Reserve. 
and they borrow money on a short-term basis. They may borrow a couple million dollars overnight or over the weekend, all right? So that is the discount rate. So that is the rate that gets charged to a fellow bank from the reserve. There's a really great movie out there called Too Big to Fail. It's now kind of older. And in the movie, they kept calling it going to the window. That's what the bank calls it because of the old days when you used to walk up to the bank teller's window. Um, so banks can actually borrow money from the Federal Reserve. And there is an interest rate that gets charged on that money. Okay, so they can raise and lower. They can raise and lower the discount rate. So if they raise the discount rate or raise the reserve requirement, what are the feds trying to do? Back to the general econ that we talked about. If they are increasing the cost of the money, people borrow less money, so it slows the economy down. If they lower the interest rate, or reduce the reserve requirement, it makes money easier or cheaper to borrow. People borrow more money, and they are trying to speed the economy up. Okay? So that's how the Federal Reserve controls our money flow. Now, we have mentioned several times these investors that give money to banks. They are what's called the primary mortgage market. The primary mortgage market is the person who literally puts their hand in their pocket and takes the money out. BlackRock, Teachers Credit Union, all of those investors, they are the ones that loan their money out to people borrowing money for residential first lien mortgages. Now, that lender makes money in two ways, all right? The first way they would make it, which we have discussed before, are the actual charges on the loan, like the loan origination fee or the discount point. That is how they make money, that upfront money for the privilege to actually borrow their money. There are charges. The second way they would make money is what is called that reoccurring income. That is the interest on that loan. So when they get their loan back, they make money on a monthly basis based upon the interest of that loan. All right. So that's how these guys make their money. Those upfront fee charges and the reoccurring charge of interest. That's the only two ways a lender can make money. Now, what happens in, and if you remember, they actually give the bank the money, and then the bank loans the money out to an individual. And I told you that banks are experts in assessing risk or through that credit. So they are the ones that determine who might get that loan. They're going to check their credit history, their debt to income ratio. They're going to do that appraisal. And they're going to say, yes, Raymond, you can borrow $100,000. And then I sign that IOU that we talked about. And I sign that mortgage. So what is going on is the bank now is holding all of these IOUs from all these people they've loaned money out to. Well, the bank really is not set up to collect or what they call service those loans. They're, the bank is not established to, set, to service the loans. The servicing of a loan is all of that back room admin kind of stuff, collecting the payment, keeping the books, processing all those uh, impound accounts that we talked about for your taxes and your insurance. They are the ones that maybe has a call center to call you and go, hey, your payment's late. 
So banks don't generally have that kind of system set up. So what the bank really does is they pool these loans together and then they sell the loans to other people. And we're going to talk about this here in just a minute, okay? So what you have are these major people or these major companies that actually have a bunch of money. So let's look at them. You've got savings associations, all right? You've got insurance companies. There are credit unions out there that have money. There are pension funds for some of the bigger companies. There's endowment funds. There's investment groups. That would be like the BlackRock. There's mortgage banking companies. These people are what we call the more first or the primary mortgage market. What do these people have in common? All right. What do all of those people have in common? I'll give you a second. They have a buttload of money and they get money every day. People pay their union dues. People pay their insurance pe premium. People put money in the bank. People join credit unions. These people get so much money that they get it every day. They don't know what to do with. Now, I use this analogy. It's getting to be an older movie, but the scene is very cool. There's a movie, an older movie with Johnny Depp called Blow. It's about the drug cartel. And in the one scene, Johnny Depp walks in and he's got a stack of $100 bills all plastic wrapped together. And he walks in his house and he sets it on the kitchen cabinet because it's level. So then there's this music montage. It shows him going in and out of airports and stuff like that. And it comes back to him and he walks in the house and he's got another shrink wrap bundle of $100 bills of cash. And then the camera scans his entire house and every level service surface in his house is covered with these stacks of $100 bills. He literally walks in and sets it on the back of the toilet because that's one of the last places he has to actually stack money. <laughs> Okay, so you're getting the image. That's what these people are. They have money everywhere. So they don't know what to do with it. So what they do is they become that Jed Clampett analogy that I gave you, where they give a bank 300 million, 500 million, 150, it doesn't matter, millions of dollars to the bank and say, hey, loan my money out, charge an interest rate, and pay me interest for that, and they become the primary mortgage market. We all think it's the bank, but it's not. It's all of these people that we have just talked about right through here. You know, pension funds, investment groups, mortgage banking companies, mortgage brokers. All of these people become the primary mortgage market. Now, when it comes to actually loaning somebody's money out, you must be licensed under this law right here that we call the SAFE Act. If you, in fact, loan another person's money, this is a licensed required activity, and we discussed this way back in Chapter 2 when we talked about some of the different entities that play a role. So when you go see your mortgage broker who brokers that loan deal between the lender and the borrower, they actually are licensed under the Secure and Fair Enforcement of Mortgage Licensing Act. It's called the SAFE Act. It requires a person to have a license. If you sit in, go into a bank and there's a person sitting in the bank, they actually have 
a license like this as well, because remember, it's not their money. So they all get this. And this group is uh, registered with this company called the NMLS. Think of the NMLS, the National Mortgage Licensing System, as kind of like the real estate agents NAR. It's the overarching national group. That's who oversees this licensing for all of these people that loan out other people's money. And that license is called an MLO license, a mortgage loan originator. And these people, just like us in the real estate world, have to go to a pre-licensing course, have to take a federal test. They have to renew their license on an annual basis. They are required to do continuing education. So those licensees are very analogous to what we do. Now, I actually have an MLO license. I actually own a mortgage brokerage. So I am a registered licensee in the NMLS system and the NAR system, all right? So what happens is when they make these loans, we started down this road, let me finish it. 